Ladies, that, that was a great segment. Yes, sir. That was a great segment. Ladies and gentlemen, now the favorite shot of all the people down in Waco, Texas. Is Texas. Texas? Yeah, you have a problem with Texas? I don't like Texas. I'm originally from Texas. Dallas, Texas, man. You're from Dallas, Texas. Just a little town outside called Hearst. Yes. You know, if there had been a back door at the Alamo, Texas would have been in Mexico. You just don't quit, do you? Never do. Don't plan on doing it either. The Diamond District. Diamond like Jim Brady. Please, Jim, take it away. <laughs> hey, folks, you're here with Diamond Jim Brady. Now, last week on my segment, I straightened out the wrestling school dropout. This week, I've got the pink assassin. I want you to see this film clip first. Roll him. Hey folks, welcome to the Diamond District. Remember last week, I had the wrestling school drop out here? And I think I straightened him out pretty good. He's still on a good exercise program. Well, this week I have one more knucklehead to straighten out. That's right, he's the pink assassin. Come in here, pink assassin. I want to talk to you. Mr. Brady, may I say it is a pleasure to be here with the Tehima. It's not no pleasure of mine. Well, aren't we uncouth and brutal? I got a question for you. What question could you possibly ask? Where on this earth, in this world, did you come from? Greenwich Village or San Francisco? Where? I come from Fire Island, New York. And by the looks of your cowboy hat and your little outfit, it looks like it. Get your hands off me. It looks like you have been there quite frequently. Listen, you want to talk to me? You talk to me with your hands off me. Don't you touch me. Look. All right, you'll have no nose lips. Just stop screaming. Stop with the yelling. You just stop that. You are a brute. I am a wrestler. Do you understand? You are a wrestler? Yes. You know nothing about wrestling. You, you know nothing about getting in a ring and kicking some butt all around the United States. You don't, okay? know, you don't know a wrist lock from a wrist watch. How's that sound, savage? Yeah, how about I break your wrist right now on television, national television? How about I break your wrist, I break your head, and I break your leg? Oh, well, Would that, you like that one? Oh, well, that just shows how intelligent you are. You're going to brutalize me in front of millions of people. That just shows how classy you can be. I'll tell you right now. What? What was that? You what? put your hands on me? What the heck was that? What do you think this is? Oh my 
of God. What kind of way is that to treat a guest? Diamond Jim Brady and his new show called The Diamond District. And I want to interrupt. I never saw a city hall bit. treat a guest that way. Let's get busy. What kind of way is that to treat a guest? I never treated somebody like that. You know, they ought to put the danger zone on. Let me ask you on. something, so Mr. Uh, Dangerously, my, my friend. Uh, we've been working these shows a couple of weeks and got close to each other. Mm -hmm. I got this idea. Why don't we take... The danger zone. Oh, fine with it. I can start And right the away. Diamond District, and we'll make it the great debate. We'll bring you two together, and we'll just, I think, uh, would you love no, to see no, the Diamond no, District no, and no, the danger zone it, together? Cut, uh, two of them, no, Diamond Jim Brady, cut, Charlie Dangerously? No! I'll tell you what. Shut I, up! Can we go to our team in the control room? Has Diamond Jim Brady, oh, has his flight left down know, yet? Is he still in town? What's he thinking about? Well, Steve Diamond Ruth. is going to leave for another two hours. Two hours. Well, Diamond Jim Brady, he's only a couple of blocks down the road in his hotel. What are you getting the come diamonds, for? I'll tell you what. Hey, no, 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 no. You ain't calling nobody on my phone. This is my Diamond Jim my Brady, phone. the Diamond oh, District, no, no, and the no, Danger no. Zone together. Oh, no, no, no. That's it. We're not, no, no way. Uh, what are you trying to get me killed? What's wrong Diamond with you? Diamond Jim Brady, he's, uh, he's my kind of guy cleaning up the ICW. We'll be back with more right after this. Crazy. <laughs> Strike a baseball. This guy, Boggs, is the best hitter in 50. Hey, I'm telling you for the last time, you are paid to watch this building. So you're going to make sure Diamond Jim doesn't come up, you understand? He shows up, yeah. you keep his butt on the street, you understand me? Huh? Huh? I pay the bills around here, you just better make sure you listen to me, pal. What, are we talking to the, uh, uh, the uh, donut-eating uh, police officers now, Mr. Dan? See, now, Bob Dow just said that you're nothing but a donut-eating police officer. Sure, he can dump on it, but now where he's running a little City scared, Park. as usual, yeah. now is their friends. Are you Ladies and gentlemen, Tony you know that Tony Atlas, of course, yeah. is the international yeah. champion, heavyweight sure champion. Show up, okay? And Tony Atlas, for the past few months, he has beaten Ivan Putski, yeah. he's beaten Scott Putski, he put Joseph Bolte out of wrestling forever in some serious injuries. But I'll tell you what, as Mr. Atlas the last few months, if you've been watching his matches, you will notice that he does not. It's always the last minute, and he's always winning with what help from the say? Duke. Well, I think he's on some shaky ground myself. Oh, is he living in San Francisco? <laughs> That's sick, Paul. That is sick. I mean, you are really crossing the line now. <laughs> I'll tell you, just, that's it. You're I got to call a dome by No, now. I know. You're, you're out of here. I'll take care of you right now. We'll just put you off the air. Oh, really? How yeah. you going to do that? Watch this. I told a real funny. Here comes Orton. He's going to get the tag to Atlas. Atlas will be fresh. Look at this. And Orton coming for the tag again. He can't get it. He's not bouncing. Atlas is not paying attention. He's going to the Duke. What is going on? And Orton can't believe it. Nobody near Orton. Why didn't he just stand up? Look at Orton. Down? Look at the Duke. Look at Orton, look at the Duke, and now he gets after the Duke. Now he's after the Duke, and he throws the Duke into the ring. He throws the Duke into the ring. And Tony Atlas can't figure out what's going on. But Bob Orton had enough. He kept trying for the tag. He's going to pile drive the Duke. And here comes Atlas. Oh! And Atlas is now going after his partner. What is going on here? And now the Duke. And look, here comes the Undertaker. I don't understand what is going on. I don't understand it. We're going to get mass oh, going on in the ring. And a double smash. And Orton is on the ground. I don't understand what is going on. And now the Undertakers and the s and are going at it. Atlas and Duke are getting out of the ring. Oh, baby. And Cowboy Bob Orton. That's the greatest thing I've ever I love Unbelievable. It. I yes. can't figure out Duke what happened. Mess with that Duke. Unbelievable. I can't figure out what happened. Bob Orton turned on by Tony Atlas. Orton Duke hurt. Don't mess with that Duke. Atlas or the family. Oh, Joseph Aldi Bob Dow. And this is going to be it for the stupid fifth steamboat. Oh, he's got him tied up. That's it. They're going to the hurt him. They he's going to break every rib in his body. Right now. That's it. Get rid of that nitwit Silverman and get the job Look done. Look at Atlas, Jim. big, big feet get going the into job the midsection. A big steamboat who was tied up in the turnbuckles. Awesome. His left foot caught. I love it. Look at that Duke. You're sucking, uh, Billy this Sullivan. I love it. What's That's going on here? Punch. The Duke just punches the referee and he's got it. Good. Good. The Look referee's at Atlas. Said, Look at this face. Atlas. Atlas is seriously trying to... He's trying to hurt him. They're doing the hurt same thing. To say it like it hurt is. They're trying to kill him as well. Like so what? And here, here comes here comes Cowboy Bob Orton. Throw it in the ring. Here comes hey, Cowboy hey. Bob Orton. Oh, what's that? And he's not hey. a Cowboy Bob Orton. Just get the Duke. And he's got the Duke down. And now he's taking on Tony Atlas. And the crowd is going crazy. Atlas is out of the floor. And Orton wants him now. Look at Cowboy Bob Orton. High on the top rope. Out onto the side. 
Ducks Atlas down right here in front of us. Bob Dowett's no, going, Bob Horton. Check it out, Bob Dowett's Horton doing right here. He's in front, he just hit the Duke again. Bob Horton has gone wild, but I don't understand this, Bob Dowett. Get out of here, Al. Horton. Bob Horton, Bob Horton, he's got his soda in his head. He threw the face of Tony Atlas, and Atlas and the Duke. All right, get the hell out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with the ace, Bob Horton. Bob Horton, 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 Bob right after these messages. 100D, Verona, New Jersey. Butter in a paper cup. Oh, well, that's that, what... I drink it. That's not the point, Paulie. The point is, across the street, where I was very happy each week doing this show, I used to get iced tea, a little lemon, a little sweet and low. Oh, uh, yeah, you should have sweet and low. That's saccharin in it. That causes cancer in laboratory rats. You're missing the whole point. The point is that across the street, I was happy. You wreck havoc. We get thrown out of there. Now we're over here. And all of a sudden, we don't get the same treatment. You got and water out of a paper cup? That's what I'm drinking now, water out of a paper cup. You're welcome. I'm not thanking you. Oh, then I accept your apology. Roll this tape, please. You see, wrestling fans, the headlock being applied to Cowboy Bob Orton. <laughs> As Atlas ah! right now has those big arms. He can rip his head back. right off if he really wanted to. Oh, hey. He does it. Go ahead, Tony. Look at the great view you What's wrestling fans on? are getting from your living room right now. I'll tell you, you're seeing it as close as you can see it. And Orton with a big punch to the midsection of Atlas. Orton now firing back, fires the right hand into the chin of Atlas. And Atlas hits the canvas on, for the first time. Get up, Tony. You see the Duke right now, again, okay. in the background, beginning to be a little oh. more concerned with this activity as Atlas concerned. is staggered a little bit. As Cowboy Bob Orton going turnbuckle to turnbuckle, smashes him into each corner. He's picked two of them out so far. Now Orton whips him across into the turn. Oh. Flying drop kick and a big man. The ace Cowboy on, Bob Orton for his up. size. Big gets up and drops Atlas to the canvas. But keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, and now they're going to try the pile driver. Suplex move here. He's going for the superplex here. Cowboy Bob Orton going for the superplex. And he can beat him with this. And here comes the Duke. The Duke has thrown his microphone. And now Orton is after the Duke. Orton after the Duke. And he wants him smashed to the side of the head. And the Duke, who probably should have stayed as a commentator. And now he comes after Atlas and gets a shot to the midsection. Atlas in some pain. Orton. Here comes a reversal from Atlas. Now the reversal from Orton and Atlas into the turnbuckles. Here comes the referee. The mediator is down. The mediator is down. Here's the suplex from Cowboy Bob Orton. And Atlas is down. Atlas is down. Orton ready for the cover. And the mediator is down. One, two, three. The crowd is counting. The crowd is counting. One, two, three, four, five. How many counts do we need? The mediator is down. Look out for Duke. And he's fasting to the face. What's he hitting him with? I have no idea what he's hitting him with. He throws Atlas over the top of him. And Duke has got something in his hand. I don't know what it is. Now he's going after the mediator. Atlas on top. The mediator coming over for the count. One, two. No, I can't believe this. Three, it's over. No. Tony Atlas was beat. No. And the Duke is hit with whatever. I don't know. Cowboy Bob Orton has been robbed, ladies and gentlemen. He should be the champion of international championship wrestling. He's been robbed by the Duke. And Tony Atlas is rolled out of the ring, and I don't even know if he's conscious. It's unbelievable. Tony Atlas is not even conscious right now, ladies and gentlemen. The Duke trying to bring him back around. We'll have to help him to the dressing room. Ladies and gentlemen, this is no champion. What does it take? to be a champion. Well, Bob Orton would never know. Ivan Pusky would never know. Joe Savoli would never know. And the list go on and on and on. Everybody wants to know what it takes to be a champion. Well, Steamboat now wants to know Tom Pritchett now wants to know. And that list go on and on and on. And now you got the big boy in here. Dama Jim. Big six foot nine, 310 pounds of muscles. And now he wants to know 
what it is to be a champion. You all been asked that question. You all gonna have to take that test. You gonna have to walk down that road. You gotta walk down that aisle and you gotta walk it by yourself. And at the end of that road, at the end of that aisle, it ain't no rainbow, son. You ain't gonna see no flying colors. You only gonna see one person, one thing standing at the end. And that's 285 pounds of nothing but steel that's waiting for you. You know, I was raised in a cave by old female land. No high-toned woman ever make me walk a straight line. On the day I was born, it was drizzling rain, fighting that trouble. It's my mother's name. Now, at the end of that road, y'all gonna understand what it means to be a champion. It ain't got nothing to do with this. It ain't got nothing to do with how big you are. It ain't got nothing to do with how strong you are. But what you are going to learn is what it takes to be a champion. It ain't the size of the man in the fight. It's the size of the fight and the man. Now, when you step in the ring with me, son, you're going to know what it takes to be a champion because you're going to meet one. You're going to see one when you walk in, and when you look up off the canvas, you're going to see one walking out, leaving you in the ring. And you're going to still wonder what it's like to be a champion. The ICW Mind? heavyweight... No, go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. ICW heavyweight champion Tony Atlas. Much better. You know, wrestling fans, there's a major wrestling event coming up to Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, Temple University in Philadelphia on March 31st. And although it's not an ICW show, there are many of the superstars from the ICW that are involved in that show, including the Lethal Weapons, and Mr. Dangerously is against Cheetah Kid and the Leopard Mask. Oh, the Battle of the Bam Bam Squads will be there in a steel cage, Bigelow versus Gordy. The main event, of course, Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorff. He'll take on uh, one of the original members of the Dangerous Alliance, talking about about the universal heartthrob Austin Idol. You see, everybody in the wrestling world is talking about the return of Paul Mr. Wonderful Orndorff. They've read in all the magazines how Mr. Wonderful came back in Ohio and gave Kerry Von Erich the fight of his life. They read in all the magazines that Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff is looking to come back and rebuild one of the greatest reputations in wrestling history. But you see, Mr. Wonderful, the biggest mistake you made is that you didn't sign a contract against any specific opponent in Philadelphia. You didn't say, yeah, oh, I want to face him, or I want to face this guy. No, you said, I'll fight anybody, because that's the legacy of Paul, Mr. Wonderful, Orndorff. But you see, the biggest mistake you made is when you didn't count on Paulie Dangerously wanting to get that main event pay. You didn't count on Paulie Dangerously, who at the last show in Philadelphia took out the San Martino family, laid out David San Martino, and made the almighty living legend Bruno look like a fool because they couldn't stop Paulie Dangerously and the Dangerous Alliance. On the 31st in Philadelphia, the Cheetah Kid and Leopard Mask are going to see what the lethal weapons are all about and exactly why they are the international tag team champions. And then Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorff, with your huge bulging biceps and your flowing blonde hair, you're going to learn why Austin Idol, Tommy Rich, and Paulie Dangerously shaved Jerry Lawler's head in Memphis, Tennessee. Why we did everything we ever wanted to do, because when it comes to the universal heartthrob, the women's pet, the men's regret, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. And Paul E. Dangerously and the lethal weapons in that same building, when we're good, we're very good. When we're bad, we're dangerous. Paul Orndorff, check out this video. My man, I feel sorry for you.
We're going to be talking with Paulie Dangerously and the ICW Tag Team Champions of the World, the Lethal Weapons, in just a moment. But first of all, Hawaii's favorite son, Vic Steamboat. I came to the ICW for one thing, that's to be a champion. I came to the ICW to prove everybody that I'm the man I say I am. To prove everybody out there that I'm as good as my brother. Lethal weapons, whether it be Phil Apollo or anybody, I'm coming after your belts. Tony Atlas, I don't care how big and bad you say you are, I'm coming after your belt, brother. Because I felt the gold around my waist one time, and I'm going to feel it again. So lethal weapons, Tony Atlas, you all listen up real good, because I'm a steamboat. And steamboats don't back down from nothing or nobody. So, brother, when I walk that aisle and I step in a ring with you guys, you better be ready for the fight of your life. Because I came for business. I came to wear that gold. I'm going to leave with that gold. Wrestling fans, whether you're watching on Sports Channel in New York, Sports Channel in New England, CTN out of New Jersey, perhaps down on HSE down in the Texas area, the uh, Florida Network down there, the Sunshine Network, or Channel 69 in Atlanta where these three guys are pretty well known. I'm talking with the Lethal Weapons and, of course, their infamous manager and his infamous telephone, Paul E. Dangerously. Let's talk about WVEU, Channel 69 in Atlanta, with Little Princess Pancake, Bonnie Blackstone hosting a big wrestling block. Now, everybody in Atlanta, Georgia, knows about Paul E. Dangerously. Everybody in Atlanta, Georgia, knows about Loverboy Dennis Country. And I know you know the legacy of the infamous Gilbert family, headed by the problem child himself, Hitman Doug Gilbert. Now, I'm walking down the streets in Atlanta. I'm walking down Peachtree, and somebody comes up to me and says, Hey, Paulie Dangerously, where is the danger zone? Hey, Paulie Dangerously, what are you doing now? How come I don't see you now in Atlanta that much anymore? It's because I have decided to go out and get myself the greatest tag team that God has ever put on the face of this green earth. Now, let's lay the cards on the table. Let's be sure, let's be damn sure that we set the record straight. Everybody's come up to me recently, they've said, Paulie Dangerously, you've managed Austin Idol and Tommy Rich. You've managed the original Midnight Express with Loverboy Dennis Condry. You've managed the Samoan SWAT team. And out of all the teams you've ever had, and I'm not trying to be like Captain Lou Albano every time I get into a tag team. Oh, this is my greatest tag team. Oh, this is my greatest tag team. No, I'm going to tell you right now that the hitman Doug Gilbert, the problem child of the Gilbert family, is the nastiest, stinkingest, rottenest human being I have ever come across in my life. I don't even like him! But the fact is, we're not friends, we're not a family, we're not a stable of wrestlers, we are an alliance! A dangerous alliance of two! One and two lethal weapons! Get to know one of the best teams in college basketball. Digger Phelps helps you keep pace with Notre Dame, introducing you to the team and taking you on the hardwood for every matchup. The Digger Phelps Show! Tuesday, Sports Channel dazzles you. Coming soon to International Championship Wrestling, Joe Cruel. Coming on now, ladies and gentlemen, a very interesting piece of video from Diamond Dallas Page, who kind of got roughed up a little bit by your lethal weapon. Oh, is he going to sue us now? No, but he has a little message that he wanted to relay back to you and your uh, lethal weapons. Oh, about him and the Fantastics? Well, watch. All right, I will. <sighs> Diamond Dallas Page here, chairman of the board of the Diamond Exchange, and I know over the last few weeks I've been saying I'm a man with a mission. That's either to stand up and take notice of things happening in the ICW, and the bottom line is all my Copenhagen dipping, coupon clipping, draft beer drinking rednecks, and all you love the ladies out there, the fact is... <sighs> No, 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 no. I want to handle this in a gentlemanly manner. <laughs> yeah, right. I understand in the ICW, there's a manager basher, that geek who supposedly ends the careers of managers. Paul E. Dangerously, a manager basher, that slippery, sneaky, slimy, low life. You know, dangerously, timing is everything. And I guess you... 
have forgotten. What happened in Florida? Well, brother, not in your wildest dreams, but I've ever forgotten what happened in Florida at the Manatee Civic Center, baby, when I had you dangling like a rag doll. And those pathetic parasites, the lethal weapons, come running in and kamikaze me, dislocating my shoulder, wrenching my neck. Homeboy, I haven't forgotten. That's why I'm on my way to the ICW, baby. And Paul Lee Dangerously, I especially have not forgotten the way you ran your mouth all over Florida, my home area, baby. Well, Dangerously, I'm coming to get you because you finally wrote a check with your mouth that your body can't cash. The diamond exchange is bigger, stronger, and B-A-double-D better than ever. And it's all going to be coming at here. In the ICW, with my motivation, inspiration, and stimulation, good God, Paul E. Dangerously, and the lethal weapons, it's going to be a B-A-double-D bad day at the beach for you. And I live for it. See you soon. Diamond Dallas Page, and we'd like to thank the uh, Sunshine Night Work for lives. all of that video they supplied to us. Those broads were ugly, man. Those they young were ladies, ugly. I thought, were extremely attractive. I get better looking broads than that. Well, first of all, they're not broads, they're young ladies, and we thank again the Sunshine Network and Diamond Dallas Page for that. You know, speaking of Diamond Dallas Page, there's a lot of newcomers coming into the ICW that, uh, well, a lot of talent. T.T. Krunchke yeah, he's in very the ICW. Good. We're talking about Super Duper Mario, oh, very popular with the so children. And, of course, somebody that uh, is making his way up very fast in the ICW, You're talking about the doctor. Dr. Dr. Tom, Tom Pritchard. Pritchard. Dr. Tom. Here's a guy that comes out with the long, flowing blonde hair. Ah oh, you better lock up your houses. You better lock up your wives. You better bolt up your windows and run for your lives. This guy is sitting here. He loves Bon Jovi. You want to come after the lethal weapons or the universal heart of most tomato or even after Tony Atlas? I'll tell you what, Dr. Tom Pritchard. You like Bon Jovi. He lives right by me in New York. So do I. You're going to be just like Bon Jovi going for that title, Jack. You'll be living on a prayer. Are you through now? Are you through? Wait, you're through. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at some of the newcomers here at International You want an at t hangover? Huh? To some of the great Thanks newcomers here on International Championship Wrestling, Women's you'll be seeing a lot more of them Women's as we enter into the 1990s. Well, that about does it for this hour, ladies and gentlemen. But before we go, there are a couple of people I really want to thank a lot. And those are those two security guards that have stood downstairs throughout this hour to uh, protect uh, you-know-who. As a matter of fact, Steve, could we get another shot of those two gentlemen downstairs? And, and uh, I want to do and thank them a lot for being with us this hour. Oh, look at these guys. Come, come on. Hey, go write a parking ticket, huh? Come on, man. What's Mr. wrong with you? you know, Mr. Dangerously, on any given day, mm -hmm. someone is going to be able to get revenge against you and could. That's true. I'm just not going to give them the day. I can't win. There's just no hope yeah, trying to win with this man. Yeah, we'll I'm going good. home. I'm leaving the studio. I'm going to get my car, go home and talk to my wife, talk to my kids, and forget having to spend an hour with uh, you know How's your wife and my kids? Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Have a nice week. We'll see you back here again next week. 